and I am back online. Hey there, welcome to the stream. I need to do something with my monitoring. As I was fiddling with sound before starting. Check one, two. Okay, that should be better. And I'm also going to start a little bit of sound. There we go. Okay. So again, welcome. I'm Junchan, and we're today uh, back to our uh, work on chronofolds. And I am going to lower a bit the audio. Hmm. So that's not working as I expect the monitoring. Okay, give me a second. Okay. Check one, two. Mm -hmm. So maybe I need to send it to default. Sorry, I'm doing things. Um, Off screen. Check one. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm not going to be able to know at what level the the pretzel. Um, sound is being output so I'm just gonna have to sort of leave it uh, leave it like this that doesn't sound to be going out at all so I'm not gonna leave it like this maybe like this no Okay, I see coming out here. Hmm. Okay, properties. I see. Okay, so it should be coming out now. Hopefully not too loud. Still can't uh, get the mix in my headphones, so I need to think a little bit more about that. Um, but I did do a checklist um, right there for different things I need to remember starting before the before the stream. And uh, yeah. Those things are on and I'll triple check. Yeah, the microphone seems to be working and on as well. So, and I restarted my router. Okay, so we should be ready to go. And today we're back at uh, working at uh, our chronofold. And um, before starting, just my usual disclaimer, you know, I'm, I like to follow tangents. So, you know, that's how my learning process goes. And uh, so I'm sorry if this feels a little bit disorganized and, uh, but uh, this is my way of learning. Hopefully it's, uh, it's of some use to you if you're watching this. 
and um, there is still a little bit of buzz in my sound um, but let's just get started so so I, I took some notes about things that I'd like to do next um, and these are in the view of sort of using the data structure within a um, within a text editor. Um, but obviously, we want this library to function um, in other contexts. Um, I maybe need to think about what these other contexts would be. Um, one thing I've been wondering is that right now I'm running this inside uh, inside Node, and but really my target is the browser. So maybe it makes sense for me to set up like a basic browser-based um, rendering, and that might actually be a good occasion to um, to show off the fact that in PureScript there's a nice way to do. Um, to do reload on on build um, to, and to do save on to do build on save uh, with the browser and um, I'm trying to remember um, browser reload oh, that's using parcel that's right and so let's try this shall we uh, pulp? No, that's pulp. That's not uh, that's not spago. But there is a spago parcel thing. Spago parcel. Um, get started from scratch with parcel. Front end projects. Install parcel as a development time dependency. npm i minus minus save dev. So, add a JavaScript file which imports and calls the main function from the output of source main. This can be placed in the root directory for your project. Traditionally, this file is named index.js. And new file, index.js. And this should do this then we add an HTML source and we can place this in the root directory as well except not coma and where did that even go okay Mm -hmm. Okay, and then add a script in the package.json. So we need a package.json here. I guess I could have done npm in it, huh? Well, the save dev should do that actually, so I shouldn't. Uh, I should in fact delete that and wait until the um, the npm save dev have has finished. I think this is taking a really long time. And it might not even work because we don't have a package JSON to save into. So you know what? I'm going to do npm init in here. And hopefully that will do things fast enough. Mm 
that uh, the safe dev will properly acknowledge it. And we can add this dev instruction and oh I thought we were done here. Um, in order for this script to pick up the changes we make to our pure script file, we should have something that helps we compile our code. And so this would be the spago build watch. And we can do this as it's mentioned in another terminal. So we'll run this in here. Okay, that sounds pretty good to me. Still waiting on parcel. Parcel. We just need to do npm rom dev when this gives us back uh, control. Storing power as well. Oh, I think I can. Go back to just a few tabs. Still not done. I'm looking at the task manager and it's not clear whether this has crashed or not. I think it has crashed. I'm going to control C, double check the package JSON, see if, I, no, it hasn't added it. So let's 
try it again. And uh, maybe let's not wait for it. So maybe one thing that even though um, we might not keep it in the core library, I'm thinking uh, we might want to have something that's like typing um, in a replica, a function that would take a replica and uh, so let's call it uh, type. Oh, well, okay. Um, type char, how about that? Oh, okay, that's done. And so npm run dev starts parcel and should give us back some feedback at some point, no? Tell us that it's started on, uh, there we go, yeah, building. It's building in the dist folder. And so we can control click here. And also inspect. Specifically get the console and it's built and it gives us our log so we know our code runs in um, in the browser and that's nice so let's uh, let's continue with uh, what we're saying here so I think we're saying we're taking a replica or we're taking a log really I think the log should sort of knows its replica and we're taking a char and we're giving back what? We could be giving back an op. And I think that's kind of what we want at this point. Which means we could have then a type string, which would take a log and a string and give us back an array of ops. And that's that's going to be convenient like let's call them uh, helper uh, functions and maybe we can put those uh, into the let bindings because this way we know they're not part of the library and we say they're helper functions um, yeah that's it and so what is type char then it takes a log and a char and probably need to know what's in the log like this and and the char, yeah, a C. Okay, let's call it uh, C H A C H R. And an op is going to be what? Well, it's going to be uh, an op like this. But uh, what's the? There's going to be a timestamp, a ref, and a val. Okay, so timestamp shall be shall be timestamp r i plus one. All right, we're incrementing the our local timestamp by one, and we know which replica we are. Mm -hmm. By the way, that makes me think that when we're appending a an op that is not from us, then we shouldn't increase our timestamp. So we need to compare the the let's call it our prime 
and I prime. And do something like um, I think we do can do something with bool, can't we? Bool. Boolean. Um, I want to apply the lowercase has call idea to transform a case um, case blah of x thing or if then else into bool so let's uh, let's go into google and check out the type for bool a a bool a if i was to x when p is false yeah so let's uh let's pass this into well let's pass this into star suite maybe Star suite. If it, I mean, I wasn't too happy with its uh, search capabilities, but uh, a a boolean a bool. So there should be a bool. Not sure why it's not offering it to me. It seems like maybe it's in Prelude actually. And so what are we saying? We're saying, um, yeah, it's time sent r i plus one if. Um, Otherwise, it's just uh, timestamps are right. And that depends on whether R equals R, R prime or not. And that compiles. And I had a thought, which is that these ind indices there, indeed there is a way, I think, to make this more efficient. I'm going to just write it as a comment to do something like type ADX, NDX, and to map the author to an array of index. Yeah, and I think this should be faster. I'm not super sure, but because uh, then instead of having a representation of something like a, of um, one mapped to like let's say one. Thing like that we'll have um, alpha map to an array here with one in it and um, so in truth these are in these are two lookups though you know, the array, array one is constant time and the author one should be also super fast I mean probably faster than this key calculation but it's an alternate representation i'm not sure which one's going to be fastest okay and um and what and then so i'm not sure whether that's the only uh, change i need to do if my op is coming from somewhere else but we'll um, we'll find out soon enough if we we get this right um let's just uh, double check here so if we receive an op uh, if we type a char, I, this this uh, helper functions for in parentheses typing locally. Uh, typing, uh, yeah, characters and strings locally. So if it's local, then we um, we should pr we should probably really say it because at some other point it might be confusing 
and it would be um, then we do need to do the incrementation. There's a question about where I maintain this invariant. The fact that the timestamp ri is correct. And I'm not sure where, because when I pass an op, like if it's the same replica, then here I'm not even using the I prime. And I could check the invariant here. And maybe maybe I want to do that for a while until um and yeah in fact maybe would we would want this to be interpretable into a kind of a debug version that checks its invariance. I guess usually what the way it's done is that there might be an append op that checks invariance and an unsafe append op which doesn't. That makes sense, in fact. And then the unsafe append op would be pretty much exactly the same, but with no checks. Mm. Where did I go? Uh, how does commenting on packages work? I don't even... Um, now maybe it makes sense to... Um, to look at this again and we can just check on pure script strings and code points and copy that appends an operation and up I don't know if I can make this a uh, a linkable comment since we will have a definition of up somewhere it doesn't look like that's a common uh, pattern but uh, let's see that's like a library we know is probably well maintained and so on that's not where I wanted to go. Maybe I.O. How about the root? Yeah, it seems like that's the that's the general way. Is that uh, these are bracketed and then the the linking will be done automatically from the types that's all good and it will be unsafe append up and so append an up um, without checking the up the checking invariance okay and I guess I don't have uh, I don't have such things here but it's probably useful to copy this um, 
I'll rerun my types and start having actual documentation there. Um, ba -ba -ba. Here, yeah, sure, why not? But the one I was thinking of. I mean, maybe just the append op. Append op should have its um, should have its example. Appends an op. So let's say append up empty log up timestamp replica or right, empty log of replica one for instance and up. Lock show right. Up time time replica one with I think we have something like this uh, in our examples, don't we? I think I can actually destroy all of that stuff. I don't think I need it anymore. Or maybe I'll need the... Um, yeah, maybe I'll need the, at least the thoughts on how to make this into an update monad. No, I'll think about this later. And uh, our up is... Okay, I need to put it in parentheses here. Like this. Mm -hmm. And that should give us, oh, well, let's, uh, let's rerun it. Alpha up on empty log alpha of up two and log show alpha log two and I save. And I'm hoping that this recompiles, but it doesn't because we have a, a problem here. And there's a unknown value bool. Okay, so that seems like it actually needed to be imported from data boolean, I suppose. So let's do it. Import data boolean. Oh, it's not in there. Okay, I thought we saw this somewhere. Um, good point, bull. Okay, well, let's search for it again. A to A to bull. Okay. Hey, Juan. Welcome back to the stream. How's it going today? Is that right? Bull? Hey, yeah. Good to have you. Um... Boolean. Case analysis for the Boolean type. Is that right? Is in control error util? 
What a strange place to be. <laughs> the human resources. Yeah, definitely, definitely welcome. So for some reason, this is in control R util. Okay. Import control R util. Boom. And I might need to import that, right? I certainly do, and that's in errors. Okay, so I might need to start a new terminal for just for that. I mean, because now I have terminals doing things. So you know what I did um, before you arrive? I I realized that I've been testing with the node in the terminal. You know my stuff, and I want to make sure my stuff also runs in the browser. So I actually wrapped it inside a, uh, a browser script. And so now um, when I save, it actually compiles and then it uh, also re rebundles um, using this tool called Parcel. Um, and then I can view the same style, uh, the same logging stuff that I was doing on the console here. But now I can make sure that it's actually running in the browser as well. So. So I'm pretty happy about that. And so that means that I have now uh, two scripts that are basically doing a watch over my source code. And so I need to open a third uh, window and install errors. Hey, just casting the spells. That's right. Okay, and so if I save now, I might need to ask it to rebuild. So just a space, what it will do. Control R util was not found. Mm hmm. Control R util. And PowerShell installation complete. Just click Chrome fold. So let's do Spago build again. Oh, yeah, here. I think that actually unblocked it. So for some reason, the um, the yeah, that's it. All right, now it's working. It's working. No, it's not working. So maybe I need to re restart this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And no, an operator uh, equal equal. And that is probably in here. You can save that. And warnings and error. 15. Could not match. Okay. So we got a timestamp. Uh, I plus one interesting t0 zero, t0 zero, boolean oh okay okay i see just missing a parenthesis here Still not right. F8. Oh, okay, yeah, right, because I copy pasted the code in the in save version and I still haven't really worked on it. And okay. And what's F what's the problem now? Type char local. Right, and I didn't finish this at all. So let's uh, let's uh, comment it as well. And it builds, and that should reload this. But it says it didn't expect the timestamp to already exist in a ref. And that's because. Oh 
Hmm. Okay, so I seem to have broken my code. So maybe it's time to actually have uh, tests. I think it might be time to have tests. And we can import uh, what, by the way, we right now we're in the main but this should be at some point data.chronofold, I believe. I mean, we can have a main for now. Maybe we, we, we keep a main and we do new folder data. And we do new file chronofold.purs. And we do a module data.chronofold where all the things except except the main bing bam boom and then we um well we might want to import that as well even though that's commented out. And uh, yeah, we're going to need a prelude and uh, and uh, control that effect or something. Uh, is it control or maybe just effect? Mm -hmm. And then import data.chronofold, all the things. And we need import data dot maybe here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, I actually don't have a glass of water in front of me, so I am gonna go grab that. I'll see you in a second. All right, I am compliant with the human resource regulation of the Junchan twi Twitch stream. Um, so have you been continuing to play uh, Outer Worlds, right? That's the name of it. Yep. Approaching the, well, is there a proper end? Ah, there's another story path. That's cool. Have you been streaming it? Nope. Have you tried? I mean, streaming, you know. Yep. Don't feel like doing that for um, for other worlds. I've been wondering about which uh, other game I could uh, I could play, and um, I'm quite uh, tempted by uh, RimWorld because you know I like uh, complex games with lots of things to manage, right? And um, yeah, that one's pretty interesting. And there's Twitch mods, you know, for viewers to interact with um, with the game. 
Yeah, right. Yeah, I think I should at least give it a try. Have you played it before? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I, I've been watching quite a bit of uh, YouTubers who, um, who play it. And like recent, the most recent I've been watching is the Survive the Swarm by Radamant. And it has a, a lot of uh, user interaction. Oh, wow. Nice. So you could totally, uh, you could totally co-pilot me there because I have zero hours and maybe it would be fun to, to start knowing nothing and, and try and discover everything. I mean, I don't know nothing because I've been watching streamers, right? But, but it could be pretty fun. Anyway, I'm going to go back to my cubicle <laughs> after this little water cooler uh, interlude. And um, what was I doing here? Right, I was saying that maybe I should do tests and I started refactoring my whole package system and blah, blah. And now I have, right, cut from, from char, sure, that's because I just, well, I think if I actually do something like uh, import, then I need to import singleton from, from none of this, none of, none of this actually from, um, well, let's find it here. Got in here from data dot string. So let's uh, just add it manually. Come on, singleton. I mangled that to enum. That would be from where is it from to enum from from data dot enum. Um, lock show, okay, that should be easy to import, right? Um, from effect console and log from the same. And we're down to having import problem, which is exactly the problems we want. And then I believe I can also apply all import suggestions. And we have a nice and clean main. And then uh, we can do the same thing here. And then we have a nice and clean cron fold, which does nothing because what? So now it compiles main and that. And, but my main, well, my main should be doing the same thing. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder why. Okay, I'll just uh, restart this. And maybe we repass out. All right, enjoy your breakfast. Um, our time. I'll put main. load here ah okay okay just need to reload manually this one time and now I just have an error with this yeah which is why I wanted to do tests um it's probably an append log right 
can trace this nicely, but um, mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a way to actually uh, output traces which uh, which convert the errors into uh, pure script uh, code map. Um, I mean, this could if it, uh, this could really be in here. Let's import data dot chronofold. The way I guess I suppose I could uh, yeah there is a way right I could simply get this from being from test.main and uh, and then I could get rid of this main and start working from uh, so yeah let's uh, let's do this. Just test main and then we remove main. And then we say, well, we might want to call this test then. We might, and in that case, maybe we just, in fact, simply move these things here. We update the import automatically. Yeah, dot dot output. Yeah, except now it's test dot. Oops. Test dot main, I believe. And we save that. Is it just going to work? No, because I need to tap our cell to get to the right file. And that should be done with the package.json. I just need to say test. And. Um, And that can be test, in fact. And so we do npm run test. And we reload. check that it's test.main but yeah it is and we have our error so that's all good if we reload this oh still an error so it's actually not coming from uh, from where I thought coming from from here
Yeah, this does work. Okay, so oh, I must have made a a change. So I think I want to test. I want a, a main like this. That's more of an example. But I also want um, proper proper tests. So, but first, let's uh, finish the thought of writing this as documentation for append log. Um, then, and, and this should be around or oh, append up, I should say. And this is what it uh, what it gives, right? Clears the console afterwards. That's a very unfortunate thing. Definitely don't want that. Uh, so maybe I need to change the code for the HMR runtime. Okay, let's check this. Interesting, right? Safe right, no auto install. Mm. Okay, which version of parcel are we using in fact? So good. Um, uh, um. At this point, you should be able to test a program. Blah blah blah. JavaScript console. Yeah. Okay. Parcel console. Um, what am I searching for? Clear. Prevent console clear. Disable clear the console. Exactly. But this should be an option. This shouldn't be. And this has been merged. Yeah, exactly. So what is this, just an RFC? No, it's not an RFC, it actually does it. Disable. Delete console, clear. <coughs> Yeah, only one thumbs up for this. Oh. Not smart. Yes, exactly. Hmm. It's been moved, but uh, still doesn't. doesn't work properly for me. I need to reload manually, which defeats the purpose. And 
Maybe I need to uh, set time out. Like even 500 milliseconds might do. Well, I'll need to reload and then save this or this. Doesn't seem correct. Um, let's uh, let's add another code that. I have an error, okay. And if I remove it, it shows, shows things. Okay, so maybe the timeout actually working. <laughs> um, okay, and this fails which is and it was working last time so what did i do well i added this test such that if r equal r prime so hold on let's uh let's remove it and see if it still works Um, I think I need to log it, but it seems like it is working. Hey. Well, uh, to tell you the truth, I am, the Pure Script is the language that I'm uh, most comfortable with right now. Um, and that's because I guess I've done a lot of JavaScript in my life. Hey Juan, welcome back. And uh, Idris, I haven't yet started in, on it um, because I'm not yet comfortable with dependent types. But I really like the fact that actually there's a JavaScript backend as well because I, I target the browser, you know, as a as a as a runtime. I'm interested in developing against uh, browser browser applications, and so. Um, from the little I know about um, really using Haskell, um, um, there's you know there's quite a lot of there's there's a quite a bunch of subtle differences. Um, I mean the fact that pure script, some subtle and so, so some not so subtle, right? But um, the fact that pure script is strict uh, and Haskell is lazy, that changes uh, quite a bit of things. But to be honest, I'm not. I, I don't feel. Um, competent enough to be able to actually know when that's really a problem. And, um, but yes, there, there are times though, you know, even though I'm not familiar with Idris to, 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 to uh, re resonate with what you're saying about leaning towards Idris, because it's, if you're, um, it, it might, it depends on, you know, your, how much you feel comfortable, um, with the dependent types um, uh, approach from the get-go. Um, I myself, you know, it took me a while to just even get comfortable with just, you know, Haskell and PureScript, just reading it. Uh, now I feel like maybe I'm just starting to get comfortable enough that I can maybe get into Idris. And I, I do have thoughts sometimes where I'm like, hmm, actually with dependent types, maybe this would be easier, but I haven't made the jump. Um, so, um, 
so I wouldn't be able to really advise you apart from this this rant. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback and how um, you know how things work for you with Idris. Uh, it's definitely if definitely the the dependently typed programming language in this family of uh, strongly typed languages that I would go for if I was to learn it, especially because Idris 2 has this quantified type things because it has the JavaScript backend. So um, yeah, I would definitely go for that. Have you uh, have you tried any of um, you say you have plans to learn one of them, but you don't have experience in them. Do, do you know any other programming language? So I thought that with uh, equational reasoning, so maybe I misunderstand bool. Let's double check our bool. You're web developer too, yeah. You've done C and C++. Yeah, see, I haven't done so much C and C++. So some of the low-level stuff that you do in Haskell to me is fairly new, but you know, I'm paying a lot of attention to it. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely either PewScript or Idris is the way I would go. Um, but you know, what you'll find is that often you need to learn a bit of Haskell, <laughs> you know, just to um, because they might not be so much documentation and so much uh, you know of a blog ecosystem around pure scripts so sometimes it's useful to refer back to haskell to understand some notions you know things like uh, monads and uh, free and all of these things uh, all of these concepts uh, when i was learning them and applying them in pure script usually you know i i would read quite a number of blog posts in haskell before wrapping my head around it So it could be the answer to what you're saying is, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, the uh, we we're definitely uh, casting spells in uh, in strongly typed uh, programming language. And you know, I find that that's it, it is quite an apt uh, description because types are really a little bit are really about describing what you want. So they're really like casting a spell. And then, you know, well, it, it turns out that most of the time we also have to write the, the nitty gritty of how, uh, how things uh, are actually done, not just uh, describing the, the specifications we want. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's beautiful and I, I love it. Um, so, Haider, definitely best of luck to you uh, embarking on this and it's definitely a, a good uh, a good thing to learn for you know for your mind and for your career um, you know I, um, in the first couple of years I wasn't even writing any Haskell or pure script I was just reading but uh, um, as I was reading it was starting to change my my perspective on the code that I was writing in, in JavaScript and and TypeScript for for a bit afterwards as well um, so, and it, it continues to change how I'm understanding, um, programming. And I think that's really the, one of the best outcomes for, from learning these languages, how it, uh, how it changes, um, how you think about programs. And, um, right now I'm. I'm a bit puzzled because I need to uh, just double check that my understanding of the bool function is correct. And, uh, and I'm going to search for it again. Ah, there, there we go. Bool. Case analysis for the Boolean type. Yeah, that's all good. But... Uh, <laughs> 
bit, a little bit more detail here would be nice. Test script is doing well, very pragmatic. Yeah, it feels like it gets boilerplate when used with type level. Exactly, that's my experience too. And you know, I've been playing around with um, with uh, with using some of the functional programming abstractions in TypeScript, but after a while, it just gets way too unruly, and um, and it's better to just you know go and uh, and and use an actual strongly typed functional program for programming language, and at least in my experience. Okay, so pure script errors is the package. And let's look at the source code for bool. If C, then B. <laughs> oh boy, I think this is the reverse as the Haskell one. Uh, okay, case analysis for the bool type. Bool x y values to x when p is full. Oh no no, it is the it is right. Okay, so I just uh, it's the same one, and I just uh, reversed it. Okay. Very good. So it's like an either. This bool function um, is really bool uh, false statement or false expression and true expression and uh, predicate. And uh, and it, if the predicate is true, it evaluates to the second argument. And if the predicate is false, it evaluates to the first argument. So it's a bit like what you would have uh, with uh, either, where you have either um, either uh, LR is uh, a left is the is the kind of the the false. It's like when you it's it's what you choose when when uh, when there's an error, uh, also in except uh, in exception. So that's why the false statement is for is first. Because it's like left, and, or I mean, that's that's the symmetry I see here. So let's um, move this around here, and then um, go back to our tests and check our browser, and it looks like it's working. No more error, and. Um, so we're good. So now I think I want to write some actual tests. So let's take a look at uh, how the how the adults do it. Um, so actually, uh, halogen is maybe again a good place to go. Test. Oh, it has a, a DAO. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe that's going to be too complicated. Um, let's do just script strings. Or ordered collections, actually. That's a great one. And check out tests and main. And so it's importing tests. And for map. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, and it's doing quick check, obviously, and we want to do that. So it, that's that's a good thing to learn. And so, so let's see. Is that? Uh, I mean, it's maybe a little bit too early to do quick check. I think it's a little bit too early to do quick check, but uh, I'm going to get tangled up into uh, writing the arbitrary instances. Although, if I look at these, they're beautifully easy. Picking a, creating a type four. For keys, for instance, there, 
a pretty nice uh, thing. I could do the same thing for my replicas. Okay, I want to try this. That sounds pretty exciting. So let's do it. Uh, let's have a test, test folder and maybe uh, call it chronofold. And then, um, or maybe call it, call it data then and um, have chronofold inside. We found chronofold.purse and then let's just import that whole thing. And call it test dot data dot chronofold, and then we'll do um, well. Then we'll want to do a similar thing in the main, which is to import the test. Uh, so let's do this. We'll do import test dot data dot chronofold and there will be chronofold tests with the oh except we don't have any such thing right now so let's do it and then that will be this right Get save not going to find it because it's probably not going to build because it's going to be missing quick check so we can import that and probably we can do that in this powershell spago oh maybe not because um because the build watch might want to be restarted after installing something so quick check and build and save okay and on value m dot cap maybe from data dot map that's a strange thing i mean i'm probably not gonna care but does this mean i have an old version of ordered collections let's check 161 and uh, well, I have some overrides here, but or oh, maybe I don't have the right uh, package version. So let's do a Spago upgrade, I believe. No, uh, upgrade set. It's upgrading, and then now we should be able to rebuild. And it still doesn't know what cat maybe is. Hmm. Okay, let's not uh, troubleshoot this because we've just imported cat maybe, but it's, it's just going to be different for us. Um, find folder, blah, blah. Uh, okay, this is becoming a bit small here. So see things and uh, okay save this Not much type non empty array with non empty array. Oh. There's some strangeness going on, and it could be because they're working on the PureScript version 14 and I'm on 0 0.13. Yeah, and cat maybe actually has been added recently and probably not published. 
so that makes a whole bunch of sense and so maybe i just need to revert back to um to 161 which is published and get the test from that instead of what i just did and so map and we just get um, up to here for instance and change the name to call tests and build succeed that's right okay and if i reload this mm, mm. Right, right, right. I need to also, um, what am I doing? I need to also print those things by adding them in here. And, um, yeah, so we'll say those are tests. And that's an example. And both are useful. And then, and then that has a failure, a non value map test. Yes, of course, it's chronofold test. And build succeeded and it reloads and we have some tests that are passed this time there we go and so now we need to um think about how we're going to test our chronofold rather than testing map and so i'm thinking we want something like uh that uh um What is it going to be? Hmm. Arbitrary small keys. Elements. A non empty array. And how is a small key used? I mean, it might not be used directly. It might just be, uh, it's an example of something that has ord in it. And, uh, and uh, maybe I should um, think about it slightly differently and think about it in terms of, well, I want, a, I want an arbitrary replica. And so I need something like an instance of arbitrary replica which would be arbitrary of just replica i think where arbitrary would be equal to replica and then f map to and some gen int i believe is what we're interested in um, Um, how do we generate an integer um, I guess bounded enum is one way to do it what does this take for finite enumeration it takes an A and returns an MA Okay, let's look at the docs. Pure script, quick check. And what's pure script spec quick check, by the way? 
And I'm thinking also I want to have uh, doc tests, uh, pure script doc tests, because those are really nice to have. Okay. Trying to test, for example, any pure script docs. Yeah, exactly. That's what I will want. Um, okay, let's keep it keep it here and not go off this tangent quite yet. Um, and spec quick check is tiny adapter between pure script spec and pure script quick check. Yeah, right. So that you can have uh, the syntax. And um, you know what? I'm going to install that stuff. Spec will install spec and spec quick check. Great, and we're back to build watch. And I kind of want all of that stuff in my main test. Such that I can do run. Ooh, accept. Is that going to work? I, I think it's going to work. And maybe we should call this example and effect unit and then use the superpowers, the refactoring superpowers, and just do example equal and then say example and be happy or call it example well it fails to build because probably it was uh, not building an expected token lock show okay there must be some um you're not happy with what indentation and lead binding probably we want to um, probably we want to indent like this. Is that the problem? No. Oh, this should be uh, do. Yeah. And you're not happy with our indentation here, which makes sense. So we'll move tests here, and then here we're actually saying something like um, describe quick check. Hey, one. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Oh, let's have a drink. Let's check out um, that um, the pure script streamer list. Where was that? Here, declarative programming streams. Are there other folks streaming right now? I should join that Discord, shouldn't I? Beep, boop, boop, beep, indeed. Okay. Um. <laughs> oh, wow, that was a, a robot testing thing. I don't know, everybody will know that I'm not a robot.
I am not going to be giving this PII or personally, personally identifiable information. And I guess I could get the desktop app. I mean, I have it on another computer, but I don't have it on this one. Does that make sense? Fine. This is going to. Oh, we need to try again. So all the uh, all the streamers have uh, have their own uh, Twitch TV handle there. Interesting, and there's some voice channels too. Um, I mean, I would allow it, but uh, huh, that's pretty cool. That's a nice way to add voice. Uh, So this is saying when when folks go live. So I suppose I should uh, hook into this. I know it looks like it's maybe automatic. Um, I yeah, pretty pretty new indeed. Do you have some advice? I mean, you know, it's a chat app, right? Um, not detecting any input from your Mac. Mic. Yeah, that's fine. It's okay. Yeah, don't show me the warning again. And uh, did I, I think I just joined the thing, but I should disconnect, right? Because it's okay, I'm now speaking into the thing, maybe. Not chat, but community. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm back. I'm back there because I want. I like to click on this. Apparently, um, okay. Voice channels are where people come together to talk. So that's cool. And what what would you say make it so that it's more of a community than than chat? That people ha just hang out there, sort of all the time and. I've seen some of my favorite streamers set up a Discord to allow people to come in with voice chat over in their streams, for instance, and that, that would be a cool thing. I've been watching C Vlad. C Vlad is working a lot. Community guidelines. So advised by the L community guidelines with a full change. Play together as well, right? Right. So you can use it as a as a voice overlay for for multiplayer games, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, to get massive. How how does it work when I mean how does it work when there's tons of people? I mean, I guess people 
talk over each other, right? Search for red flag yet. Let me see the behavior. Can they, um, do they have an interface to be able to sort of uh, allow people to, to speak or not? Like a kind of moderated push to push to here or something like that? Where the stream can deafen their voice chat. Oh. Rolls, right. Interesting. Well, definitely something to, to check out. And we'll create your own server. A new server with voice, text chat, and blah. Okay, got it. But I don't want to do that, I don't think. Right, right. Okay, that's cool. FPUs. So I'll take a look at this uh, in a bit more detail, maybe uh, during the next break. Um, I'll add a bit of water. And get back to um, our tests. And... Uh, Okay, that's the doc tests and that's the spec quick check. And so, yeah, right. So we can do um, like it. Um, or let's uh, maybe say chronofold and it uh, quick, it quick checks and blah, and then Let's take a look at the oopsie. That's not available. Right, it's on GitHub IO now. Okay. Writing specs. Okay, it's the should should equal. Okay, so let's do something like. put this into a another checking thing where we say let these things and we also need to do I think in here and we say um, Right, I'm going to need to get uh, alpha in here. I mean, I'll probably want this uh, elsewhere, but I'll uh, do this like this for now. <clears throat> and I do a alpha lock to should equal this. Um, bum, bum, bum. Should you call this? Except we'll need to say, um, right, uh, timestamp um, alpha two, code point zero fifty, one infinity from foldable purple. Timestamp alpha one, timestamp 
after act two. Timestamp alpha one. Timestamp alpha two. And what was it? Alpha one here. Okay, let's uh, copy paste. And let's also um, indent. That's overkill. Mm -hmm. But that is useful. And save. And you're not happy with the back tick. Oh. Because that was copied from from the internet. You're kidding me. You're still not happy with the back tick. Am I? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not indented correctly here. That's that's better. And I just need to get should equal from spec. Mm -hmm. No, not from spec then. Okay. From somewhere else. For example, should equal from assertions. Okay, and you don't know log because I haven't imported the, the chronofold log. I can do this right here, log. Code point or data string dot code points uh, still unhappy with the code point. Unknown value alpha log two, right? Because we we don't do this anymore here, and still unknown data constructor code point. Um, that's a bit strange. Let me see if I can get some assistance. Yeah, that was actually in data string. No, it imported the type. Oh, that's not that's not imported. What is this header? Checking it out. Dependent types in Haskell. Yeah. Definitely, Wine Rich is definitely uh, someone to be listening to. I haven't uh, haven't seen this video, I don't think. But uh, you know, 2017. That's one of the, the dependent types in Haskell is one of these features that has been moving quite a lot in the past couple of years. So, and I think if you want the latest in it, you kind of need to um, right. Yeah, definitely check it. You know, I think it's Richard Heisenberg that has a. Um, 
the most um oh there's a there's a joke as well in there i'll, I'll check it out um richard eisenberg uh, dependent types has call GitLab dependent has call and what is this other link you sent yeah exactly and that's from 2018 and you know what that's probably still going to be maybe a bit old possibly i think yeah that's it this is the this is this is what you want i'm going to paste it in the chat this is really the that's the spec um that they're working on in ghc and you see uh last deleted one month ago that's really the latest um in terms of the spec for dependent haskell you're very welcome okay um right so code point is of course i now remember is um is uh, a hidden type constructor so we don't have code point as a constructor we only have code point as a type so we need to do uh use the enum instance if we have um from enum imported and then from foldable that should be from map or k mm. yeah I, I think it we need to import it directly from data map import data dot map from foldable Topple, well, that should be in prelude. Let's uh, or should it? No, it's on that in data topple. Topple, yeah, data topple. And you're not happy with that? Oh no, you're just still building, I think. Still say I know that I construct a tuple. Yeah, because I imported the type and not the type constructor. And unknown value. Ooh. Ah, right, yes, of course. I haven't finished there. That would be uh, alpha one. But you're not happy with the fominum. Could not match int with type code point. Um, do I need to type it as a code point? Can I do this? Or is it two in them? I'm thinking of. It is, but I need to um, to wrap it in a maybe, and so I say maybe um, uh, I need to go back to um, to cut point here and. Uh, I think I'm I think I'm gonna be stuck again unless I use a unsafe thing. Cut point. Oh I can do char to cut point. Okay, so so in that case oh yeah 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 okay. Cut point from char, exactly. So I can just have this in there and be happy, right? Uh, if I balance my parentheses. Uh, 
and what do we have? Int with type index, right, right, right. Um, here, indeed, this is index one, and we might have the same problem here. Yep, index uh, zero and index one. We'll probably remove this at some point, and uh, okay. Oh, that's good. We're just not happy with the example. Oh, because this is in half now. Yeah. So I need to uh, lift the fact. Not happy with that. Leave the fact of a class, yes. Um, could not match type half with the fact. Um, do I need to run off then? Because I can't run this in half. I mean, this. Uh, um, I thought lift effect would work there. Maybe I run it first. Oh, it's lift effect from F, I believe. Or maybe it's lift F, actually. Um, let's go to F. Pure script, F. Or maybe it's just lift. Effect, lift effect. Finding effect class. So that's the right one, right? Effect class, lift effect. Oh, yeah, yes, okay. So in that case, this is enough. And I need to import half. Oh, this is in effect, and uh, what? Spec T. Okay, yeah, that, that, that is to give the fact. Oh, scary. I still cannot match effect uh, with F. Is it a parenthesis uh, thing? Describe do it. Describe do it. Oh, launch shaft. Launch shaft. Okay, so let's be in effect. And then, if we're in effect, then we don't need to lift effect and then we launch off. Alright? If we have it. Yeah, this one indeed. Okay, so let's not log. What's the difference between run and run spec, huh? We don't know, but we'll use what's in the dock.
objects are things. It from test spec. Test spec. Fine, let's um, maybe because chronofold test is an F. Oh, we need a, a, an EQ class in log. Yeah, that's that's all good. That makes sense. Let's do that. Um, we need the chronofold log, and we have a generic. Um, instance on that so we can do generic EQ. For EQ and rename this correctly, show log and EQ log without a spelling mistake and we need to import generic EQ. Mm -hmm. And we need EQ on index. Okay, we'll do a manual one. EQ on index where EQ index I index J equals I equal J. And I guess, no, I guess we can say that uh, infinity is uh, equalizable, even though that's maybe a little bit strange. Right, and then the rest is false. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, and then we just have import things. The little typer. Oh, is that from the Lisp sort of tradition? I didn't understand that much of it, maybe because I'm not ready yet. Yeah, you know, it's, I, I have never heard about the book. I totally wanted to take a look at it. Little typer, IT press. Oh, it explains dependent types. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, dependent types, if you come from JavaScript, I think it's, I mean, in, in my case, it's, it was, it would have been a, a step too far. I think I needed to first, um, you know, uh, understand um, the basics of, um, strongly strongly typed functional programming before getting into dependent types and now i feel like i'm you know more and more confident with strongly typed functional programming but i don't feel yet confident uh, enough to um to go into dependent types i, I think it is you know um, you need the foundation of um of strongly typed functional programming before you get to dependent types. I think that's how it's taught in general. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this was also hard for me. Um, I, I especially hard for me, uh, you know, when I started learning. But I didn't know that this book existed and that's really cool to know that. And um, Friedman, Friedman, afterward by Conor McBride. Yeah. That's cool, that thing. Who tweets about it?
to programming type theory. Yeah, well, you know. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, that's, it, it could be an interesting thing. I wonder whether that's something that's recommended in general for learning dependent types. How did you learn about it? Because um, how I would do it is I would um, I would check out um, the I would I would start with Idris specifically, and you know I have some basic concept because I I know some of the type level programming stuff in Haskell like you know like representing piano piano naturals and in the types and things like that, um, so I would um, I would start by you know looking at uh, looking at examples in there and kind of work my way through this, like, you know, dependency type vectors. I mean, I think I, I think I have some sense of how this actually works. You know, it's, it looks so haskell -y, In fact, I, I would play with the language uh, that that's how I would do it. But, um, what, you know, I, what I would probably do is simultaneously play with this and then maybe read a book at the same time that that would probably be how I would approach this. And um, yeah, this doesn't sound very foreign to me, right? This actually, I feel like I can read this. And so maybe, maybe a book is a good idea at where I'm at. Hmm. I'm trying to think, I think there are some folks also that, uh, I mean, there's uh, what's his name? Um, I'm trying to think now of other types of material. I like to learn by watching people code as well, right? And uh, I'm thinking now of um, the gentleman who developed Roy, which also compiled down to JavaScript, Puff and Fresh. Puff and Fresh, uh, I think, has some stuff on, on in, in Idris. Puff and Fresh. Um, or is it Agda? Idris workshop and on their videos. Typeset printf uploaded by Brian McKenna. Yeah. So that's that's the type of stuff that I would spend time looking at as well. Um, um, yeah. Take a look at this. Um, I mean, I don't know what the level of it is, but that sounds interesting, right? Typesafe printf. Um, Printf, printf is notoriously tough to express with uh, with strongly typed uh, functional programming because uh, you need you need to make the type of your string you know of your tokens in your string depend right there you know this so this should probably be a, a, a quite interesting thing I would re that's how I learn myself so you know sometimes sometimes I do like to dive into uh, more theoretical books. Um, but I'm, I think my, my, at, at some point, at least, I mean, I like to understand the theory, you know, I absolutely love to know about some of the category theoretical background for all of the Haskell stuff and, you know, really enjoy reading, uh, Batov's Miluski series on category theory and whatnot. Right. Um, I also try to pay attention to some stuff that come out on type theory and try to understand the relation to it, but at some point for me uh, the way that i know that i understand it as a as a coder is when i can actually start programming right and i and it's just it's been the beginning for me right i i've been writing for now a year i've been sort of writing code in pure script a little bit in haskell and now i feel like actually i'm starting to get a, a little bit of a hang of it and uh but i've been reading haskell and pure script for at least five years before I actually, um, so before I started to actually write it, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, I, that that's what I'm also learning is how important it is to, how the modeling aspects is influenced by my understanding of, um, 
of the language, right? Because the abstractions you use are very different from the abstraction that I, I used to think of as modeling, right? Because to me, it was more like, you know, data modeling, maybe database modeling, that that was the main aspect of how you model your your domain. But now with all of these more mathematical abstractions uh, um, in the strongly type uh, world, then it's a different type of modeling. By the way, talking about modeling, uh, you definitely want to check out this book, Algebraic, algebraic uh, Modeling by... Um, 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 Sandy. Um, Acquire. Yeah. Algebra driven design. In fact, um, you know that. Um, Sandy wrote a book on type level programming, in fact, um, thinking with types. And that's, um, yeah, that's definitely recommended, in fact. If you're starting to get a handle on Haskell and that you want to move into dependent types, then actually this is, I think, the, a good gateway. Um, and in fact, it gets into dependent types at uh, the end. Hey, well, I've started. Uh, I've started it. Haven't finished it, and I also uh, didn't get yet the algebra algebra driven design. But I've been super interested in looking into it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, where am I? I think this can pass finally, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> and uh, so, what if we reload this? M not much. Why? Um, oh, well, because Chrono 4 compiles, but we need to compile the test as well. And it compiles, and we have some tests. Well, no, we don't have tests right now. It could be because the console reporter doesn't report in the browser. So let's look at uh, pure script, um, pure script spec and um, reporters. Spec reporter, X unit, order, default reporter, the guide, and uh, let's see, browser, browser testing. A test program using text spec runner run spec cannot be browser refined and run in a browser. It requires no JS to run tests in a browser, see browser testing. So indeed, and so I need mocha or karma. I see, I see, I see. Okay, well, I want these things to work both in the browser and in um, and in node. So I suppose I should uh, have a test suites for both. Very well. And I think I already played with uh, pure scripts. Script Mocha, in fact, yes, uh, because I have a commit on there. <laughs> so let's um, install this. So I will install spec Mocha. And it's not in Pursuit so, or uh, into Spago, so I need to install it manually. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all fine. Let's do it. Packages. And spec mocha. Hey, one, welcome back. And uh, right, we need to know what the dependencies are. Console. Oops not the dyslexic dyslexic version foldable traversable traversable and exceptions and 
spec and then spec mocha and pure script spec. And we have releases, we have tags, we have a v4 tag. But uh, let's see. CC one E zero three three. Right, so I might. Uh, oh, with that, that was just a documentation upgrade. So I can do uh, V four. And install. Oop, uh, permission denied. Okay. So you're unhappy with the tag. Let's check the tag again. V400. Yeah, I think because uh, because it needs to be a branch, and that's an error that's uh, that's out there. So let's just get master then. Okay, and uh, and then I think I need to install Mocha as well, don't I? Yeah, that's not in the docs and in usage. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, npmi minus save dev of uh, Mocha. And I need to add this to my test index.html in the head. And Do I need to require this? I'm not sure. Um, I think this should be enough. Okay, Mocha has installed, and then I uh, have some package JSON stuff. Parcel test minus minus open. I don't need to do that. Main. Right, however, I do need to do this. So, um, let's see. Hmm, maybe I can improve my the way I do this now, test uh, test dot main as an index, right? So let's try. Stack will bundle app. Oh, I need to bundle it. So yeah, so no, there's no no choice. I don't think. Let's try. Um, so I'm going to stop this and then do a spago test watch here. Not spago. 
npm run test watch. Okay, and then here. <laughs> yes, I, I do. I totally do. I'm just going to do npm run test browser and see whether that actually works. I might want to remove the dash dash open here. Well, ah, an old test doesn't exist. Okay. So yeah, so I need to fix this. And uh, let's take a break. In fact, I'll um, go and order some food. So I'll put the be right back screen. And I'm back. Hey, Haider. So which one is that? Functional design and architecture? Let's check it out. Ah, yeah. I know of Alexander Granin. Thanks, one. Um. Alexander Grenin, in my view, has some pretty, um, well, he's a, he's a heterodox thinker, I would say, in the ecosystem. Um, one of the ones who think that monads are not necessarily useful and is presenting this uh, hierarchical uh, modeling pattern, which I think is actually fairly similar to other patterns uh, using free monads and whatnot. Um, 
but one of the good things about it is that it's very focused towards you know actual day-to-day -day programming rather than the theory so i think the reason why you know he's against monad is just because of the fact that you know you don't necessarily need to be uh, knowing this concept necessarily to program but yeah it's a controversial um point of view in the community um but this thing seems like um fairly standard in a sort of high school curriculum uh, as i see them and i actually don't see anything about uh, his concept on hierarchical um, free monads i wonder when when it was uh it's completed in uh in october Right, uh, distributed, uh, yeah, I see, I, I saw uh, him talk about this, I think in uh, the Haskell Love conference. What, uh, what was crazy hard for you uh, in this book, Hyder, I'm curious. tests I see okay so I already need that I don't believe and then then let's go back to our our starting to be a bit crowded here huh let's do a um let's do a, a copy paste to the log yeah we weren't looking at the much but uh, here we can copy at least uh, i mean some of that stuff is not useful maybe quick check on spec right? those are things and doc spec and uh, all of this again it's good for what this doesn't need to um, but maybe i'll put it on another screen just to have it F, probably not useful. Visit typer, yeah. Address two, why not? Brian McKenna stuff, definitely the books, sure thing. And then all this runner things, sure, but maybe over there. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, copy those. And uh, we can, I think, let go of all of these. And we can go back to here and code reference smoker is not defined. And uh, let's see. So, oh. Right, okay, got it, um, got it, got it. So indeed, maybe we do need to have this script up here. And uh, however, we'll need to do some imports in it. And that's what I missed, I think. No, because we should be able to do the Mocha stuff. from here so so hold on maybe I need to restart my browserifying thing oh by the way the note the console reporter for a node actually does work so that's that's nice 
Um, okay, and yeah, we want to remove the the dash dash open. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't such a great uh, recommendation in the documentation. And where's my chat? The most relaxed streamer I've ever seen. Is that true? <laughs> I guess I am pretty chill. Um, it depends. If I guess if I get excited, then you know, energy levels rise. Okay, uh, reference mocha is not defined at index five, right? So that's yeah, that's all the way up there. So how do I make sure that this is imported? I mean, most relaxed could be that I'm a bit like. You know that my uh, I'm at the point where uh, HR needs to uh, force me to take a vacation because I'm I'm too low energy. <laughs> and people smoke weed get out and like how relaxed you are. Yeah, man. Um, I'm not gonna say anything about my um, my my weed consumption or the absence thereof on stream. Um, well, I could say that I haven't smoked weed today, that I can say. Okay, mocha, run, and set up. Okay, I'm, how, where, when is mocha imported? That doesn't make sense. I'm um, confused, and my instructions are poor. Combining the example from running Mocha in the browser. Okay, there's an example here, and it imports Mocha. There we go. That's 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 the stuff. Except I don't really want to load this from the internet, and I think I did this before. So maybe if I search through um, code in. Uh, in my workshop, this wouldn't be in my workshop, would it? Where would it be? Build code. Maybe here. No, not here. Oh, maybe, uh, yeah, yeah, in Hypercore. I think that's where I was trying things. Open with code. The library I was working on, um, wrapping someone else's library in Node, but I didn't complete that. But it does have the tests indeed, and the index.html is right here. Oh, well, it is using the. It's actually. Uh... Well, it's actually more terse because I am importing directly the, the bundle. So let's just uh, do that and remove remove this. Less moving parts is definitely great. Oh, except that that's going to break my uh, node test, isn't it? How do I run my node test then in here? Oh, well, I just run mocha on output test, I see. And then my tests are just uh, run mocha. I see, yeah, but I I don't want to do that. So maybe I uh, removed the index file too fast. 
but let's see if it works. Well, sort of. Locks things, but it tells me that uh, it hasn't really run my stuff. But that's because I'm not doing run mocha in there. That's why. So the launch F stuff, some of it gets into the log, the example stuff, which is fine. But I guess I just need to do the run mocha now. In here. Let's see. Hey, you know one, the other thing about me being chill is probably also because I'm I'm a little older, you know? I'm uh can you guess how old I am? Okay, mocha blah. And run mocha here. Okay, test spec mocha. So we need to import that stuff here. And then we need to run mocha here. More. Um, and I guess. I guess maybe I can do this uh, twice. Almost. Yeah, yeah. You can say you you won. I'm I'm forty six actually. Um. Okay. So. So I guess I could let uh, let tests equal blah right to be like uh, well no being indented properly would be better i don't sound like it i know i'm very immature <laughs> that's good yeah i look pretty young too i mean i mean we're not going to uh, uh set up my webcam today one day we will And uh, let's see. So we do we do tests. That's it. So browser browser tests browser tests and uh, node tests, right? And so we just do a test. Will that work? Reload. Mm, let's see. Did it compile? No. Do tests. Oh, well. Could not match type effect with identity. Ooh. This has type identity? That's strange. Um, Fit unit, fit unit. Maybe I don't need to do duo. And I can just do do here. Still not. Describe checks blah uh, let's check what the type of um, it's supposed to be a spec unit Maybe if I annotate it as such, and it feels like probably I should just not put this in a in a let clause, but have it here as spec unit, and test equal blah and tests. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Then we need to import spec. That's one test, test uh, spec indeed. And run mocha is not happy now. Let's double check. Run mocha does do of blah. Are we are we still getting? Oh. All right, that stuff is old. I was using the F monad. Um, okay, it's trying to match spec T F unit identity with spec T F unit effect. <laughs> so let's see if there's this type check it does and there's this type check it doesn't okay so you're not happy with what let's try Let's try this. That type checks. Speak of unit identity. Oh, oh, I see. So we actually shouldn't, uh, well, huh, see. I see, I see. Um, hmm. Back effects. Let's see, did I uh, have to deal with this here? Run mocha long. So it's just because it's trying to unify the type. I guess if I can make it sufficiently polymorphic. So maybe there's a spec class. Spec type class I could use here. And if there is, where would it be? No, let's see there's a type class. Class nothing here. Um ba -ba -bum. Uh, sparrow sweep spec so don't know what happened here and um, let's go to the super sweet um, don't publish on oh, pursuit yeah pursuit pursuit is there no class thing there is no class thing Spec T. Okay, let's try to understand this again. Spec is Spec T half unit identity, but you want Spec T half unit effect. Mm 
And why do you think you think that test is oh because I've specialized it. Okay, fine. So what so identity is the monad, so let's okay, let's write it as spec T of um well half unit M A. Okay, oh that's my food, I'll be back. Okay, so let's try and uh, get to the bottom of this, and uh, if we don't in the next uh, five minutes, then then I will end the stream and try again tomorrow. Um, I had a thought uh, while getting to the door, which is that really there should be a better story to do isomorphic testing between Node and uh, and the browser in in PureScript, but um, yeah. So we are saying this with a monad M, aren't we? Uh, for all M. You happy with that? Um, ba -ba -ba, tap variable A is undefined. Yeah, it's actually for all A as well. And but you, you don't think that that's the case because you can't match the unit with type a yeah okay fine right we can do unit that's okay hey oh yeah i did it amazing oh that's good wow that's definitely me having made some progress about understanding types <laughs> very cool Okay, so this builds, and then what? Then does this uh, does this actually show test passing? It does. It does show checks, and uh, and um, well, I mean passes failure. Okay, it's clipping something. I don't know if I want that. Right, I think there's something with the the reporter's choice. Um, I think that I came across that when I was doing hypercore too. So let's see. Is there a way to ah growl is why it's uh, shouting at me for not being um, able to do notifications? Um, and I don't need to have that. I can comment it out. And uh, what else? Um, I mean, I'm importing child. Uh, 
setting up BDD. Um, right, so maybe that's that's uh, I could be setting it up with a different interface. I think. Or could it be importing Mocha eight zero one here? Since eight two one. Well, now I'm remembering something about uh, well, yeah, about um, about the reporting being not not having all of the describe statements and whatnot because here it uh, yeah it should be inside a chronofold section but it's not whereas it is here and i remember thinking about that um and did i write an issue about it somewhere inspect mocha update for doo -doo -doo. So that wasn't it. Restore description in the default HTML reporter. I have a patched version for this that didn't get merged. Ha ha. Weird. Okay. Well, it'd be nice to merge that thing though. Maybe I should. Uh, what should I do? I should bump this. Um. Maybe I should add a, uh, a screen check, a screen grab. I don't know. Um, hi there. Um, would you have a chance to merge, to look at this and uh, merge it? And today I used the library again and um missed and um had to point to my fork to get the proper describe statements. Um, I mean, I guess um, it is an empty pull request. That's not a very nice thing to do. So maybe before complaining, I should edit this and say um, in the um, without this change the descriptions as a it labels are not grouped under their describe labels uh, this change fixes it and um, yeah comment um Hi there. Would you have a chance to look at this and merge it? Okay. And it's also comment because I'm not sure that the editing will send a notification. And then we will point our um, our overridden package to our version. It's in the patch one branch. So in 
patch one, save, and we need to reinstall. I will install spec mocha. Installing and run test watch. Build succeeded and 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 reloads. Builds and it has the the header as promised. Excellent. Okay, so that's a good uh, a good point to stop. Um, maybe I should write in my log what I what I did. Um, that's a nice uh, that's a nice thing to do. In fact, so what do we do? We um, moved um, the well. We um, put the chronofold code into uh, data dot chronofold module. And we um, set up testing for both Node and the browser. And uh, did we do something else? Let's see. Oh, we did fix uh, something, I think, in the library as well. Mm. Our next thing is that I want is to set up the doc tests. That's going to be nice. And then... Yeah, we started writing basically library... Um, started on library documentation and started this completely and what we want to do next is um, set up doc tests and of course continue with things but um, that's it so thanks for following one great to see you again thanks a lot for taking good care of me and um i will see you tomorrow same time take care